ago, I, I think in 72 or 71, uh, when I arrived back, I think 72, I arrived back from Vietnam, I was working the club called the E Little Club in Beverly Hills with Joan Rivers. It was, she was doing her workshop uh, there, it was on Canon, and um, I was doing my showcase, talent showcase. I was interviewing young, bright talent of singers, comedians like Michael Feinstein, he was there. I had, he, matter of fact, he just came in from Ohio. He used to play the piano for me. Had a lot of great comedians, Yaka Shmirinoff. Uh, a lot of talent, good singers, too. And uh, this gentleman used to come into this club a lot, the E Little Club. Michael Silver, Mike Silverman it is. It's not Michael, it's Mike Silverman. One of the Beverly Hills tops real estate. Tell me about, from Bronx, are you really? Yeah. Grew up in the Bronx? Yes, yes. When did you, Mike Silverman decide to come to Hollywood to get into real uh, estate or whatever? In 1943, a, a war came along. Uh huh. And they had me on their list. And uh, I tried to make a deal with the government to go every other war now, you see. <laughs> and, and what happened is uh, um, I uh, joined the Air Force. Uh huh. They gave uh, me an aptitude test and right. decided it was engineering material. And they sent me out to Oakland, California, uh -huh. Oakland Air Base, where they're putting together B-17s, which they needed badly, right? Because General Rommel was beating the heck out of us in North Africa. Uh -huh. They needed heavy bombers, and I landed in Oakland, California. And I took one look at the sky and the green grass, and I said, "If, uh -huh. I, if I live through this war, and a lot of my friends did not, uh -huh. um, uh, I was going to return." So, 1945, I end up in New York City with this dream. And coming I back to coming California. Coming back right. here. And 1949, I arrived here with a, um, a beat-up old car, this much gas in the tank. You drove across. And uh, no connections, no uh -huh. awareness, not too much education. Uh -huh. And I stayed at a dollar-a-day flop house in Lafayette Park Place uh -huh. near Vermont and Wilshire. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but that was a good area at that time. It wasn't really dangerous oh, at Vermont yeah, yeah. and Wilshire. When I moved in, I made it dangerous, you see. Oh, okay. And, <laughs> and what happened is, uh, is um, I got my smarts in high school, and I learned graphic art. So this Buckaday Rumi house, I'm doing freelance graphic art. Uh -huh. And I was a happy hippie. I was enjoying it. I didn't have any money. didn't need any money. Mm -hmm. Then I met a drunk at a bar, Dave's Blue Room on La Sunset okay. near Larrabee. Uh -huh. Frank, Fra Frank Sinatra used to come in play drummers there, and Johnny Carson used to come in. There was a club there, yes. Club, that's right. Yes, absolutely. Dave's, Dave's Ray Bourbon had a club there, too. Right, right. It was Ray Bourbon's club. I remember that. Go ahead. And they changed the names of Yeah, they changed many McNasty. of them. Now it's the, it's, it's the Vi uh, Viper Room. Right, Go exactly ahead. right. Go ahead. I met this gentleman at the club who uh, uh, was a real estate business. He began telling me about the commissions he was making. <laughs> and so uh, I was getting a little dizzy. I don't know if it was from the vodka or the commissions he was talking about. So I said, how soon can I get started? And I met him next day for lunch, and I'm in the real estate business. And you've been in real estate ever since? Ever since, right. Mike, tell me about Benita Granville before. Benita oh Granville God. had something to do with Mike Silverman. 
This what is a, she was a wonderful actress, Benita Granville. Yeah. What happened? I At the Hollywood Canteen? Right, just before we uh, went overseas, so we stopped in Los Angeles for a period of time. Right. And someone said, look, you look like a lonely GI, why don't you go to the Hollywood Canteen? Mm -hmm. There's pretty young uh, starlets come and dance with you. Right, right. So I shaved, and I got myself neat and nice, and I went over there, and there were 200 guys who shaved neat and nice, <laughs> and I'm, I'm shy to begin with. And I back up against the wall, and Betty Grable, 18 years old, was dancing on the floor, and no one could take uh, eyes off her. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, I don't have a chance. All of a sudden, a pretty hand came up and says, want to dance, soldier? It was Benita Granville. Uh -huh. And we danced, and uh, many years later, I bought the building that she and uh, Jack Rabbit. You bought the building after. Right. Tell me something. Mm. Black hair, steel, bl I mean, black, good-looking, debonair, always been classy I'm always n I've seen you around for many years but never seen you with dark hair yeah. but when you arrived here you had black hair oh, yeah. oh. dark and handsome Joan Crawford tell me about Miss Joan Crawford and Mike Silverman what well uh, I got involved with a John Haskell with the Macombo building and uh, the one on Sunset right right and John Haskell's wife was um, Dorothy Manners who was a leg lady for Luella Parsons before you know, I got involved with the industry, and I got invited to my first Hollywood party. And I walk in there. And that I'm was your very first? My first. With Joan Crawford? No, no alone. Oh, alone. Did not but I mean Crawford. meeting Joan Crawford. Right. Yeah. And I'm standing at the bar having my sarsaparilla. I was not in the <laughs> drinking situation. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened is, uh, is um, a door opens, and everyone stops and looks at the most beautiful person you've ever seen with uh, hair up and... Uh -huh. Shoulder to the floor, mink coat, mm -hmm. magnificent lady, and she s doesn't walk in the room, sashays into the room. Uh -huh. And everyone's making a fuss over her, but she knows there's one guy at the bar drinking sarsaparilla who wasn't making a fuss over her. Right. And she walked over and says, Who are you? And I, it took me 10 minutes to mention my mom. My, my, my name is my. I had a speech problem. Uh, and so she said, Come join the party. She put her hand in my. Uh, mm -hmm. my and we were an item for a period of time. So she took you away. She swept Mike Silverman to, uh, uh, was it the boot box? Uh, no comment, but. Come uh, on, Mike. Very helpful. You went with her. There's, there's a, your reputation around town, uh, they're saying that uh, she really seduced you here in Hollywood. Well, I have, uh, I have some comments to make on another Come program. Okay. But uh, Come uh, on. she once uh, asked me to uh, host a party at the old Roman up south of Wilshire. Mm -hmm. Old Roman ups, and at 2.30 in the afternoon, a uh, uh, Humphrey Bogart comes staggering by, had, uh, and Joan said, um, uh, Bogey, come sit and meet my friends. Mm -hmm. And um, So Bo you met Bogey. Bogey, oh. and, and so it was helped my real estate career enormously. You know. How did you get into real estate, and, and from there you went to school? Did you have to go to school oh, to yeah, get a license? Yeah, yeah. And your first house, tell me, the very first house, real estate, to the celebrity. Oh, Which wow. One? Oh, there were so remember? many. I no, do the very first. I do remember through John Haskell, my first client was Cary Grant. Cary Grant. And uh, interesting about the timing, uh, uh, Frank Sinatra had his house for sale on Carrollwood up right. at Holmby Hills. And I showed um, uh, Cary Grant this house and given an idea to span the time, in the playpen was a very young uh, Frank Sinatra Jr. and Nancy. Uh huh. And uh, this was way, way, way back. So that's a memory I'll never forget. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, Cary Grant, my first client, and of course it went on to many others, Judy Garland and... Um, Tell Judy me about Garland. As crazy as she was, the greatest entertainer ever. She, she was having a low point in her career, and a gal named Gracie Fields, a wealthy actress from England... Uh, was married so, to... So, sort of heard... I don't remember who she was Go ahead. To, but she heard that um, Judy was having a rough time. Right. So she invited Judy to spend two weeks at the Quisasana Hotel in Capri. Uh -huh. And uh, so they're sitting around a pool, and Judy's complaining. She said, I've been here for two weeks, and I've not seen a typical Italian Adonis. And all of a sudden, uh, this gentleman walks by with some pretty girl and something. She says, hey, that's the first looking Italian Adonis. And somebody, are you serious? That's Mike Silverman from the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> they called her over, introduced her. We had a big laugh, and Judy and I remained friends for the rest of our lives. And I sold her the house that she had in, uh, on Carrollwood, uh -huh. where she lived with... Uh, a former... Um, Did you sell Jane Mansfield's house, that big one? She on lived Sunset, in Sunset yeah, yeah. That big pink house? With the swimming pool. With yeah, the that, that's yeah. Yeah. 
Hey, Mike, you were making millions and millions and you bought a lot of property and you got into uh, Mike Silverman Real Estate here in Beverly Hills right. and Malibu too. Oh, yes. Did you sell st any of Stallone's uh, stuff at all? No, as a matter of fact, I met St <laughs> Stallone's mother the other night. Right, you know, right, she right. She said, Cole, fly in the morning. We uh -huh. have a $15 million house in Florida he wants to sell. So the one thing leads to another. And uh, Were you going out with Anna Marie Albrighetti? No, we had, a, we had several dates. Uh, and I was a big admirer of her, and she was had the best voice in the you whole world. You were known as the dater of this town. Never been married before um, until just recent. Yes. Mike Silverman, you've dated the most beautiful women, ah. the most glorious women in this town. Gosh, sounds good when you Tell, say it. Well, you're the Cary Grant of uh, Beverly Hills. Don't know saying. what you're talking yeah. about, actually. What is the secret, uh, Mr. Silverman? What just do you have? Just happenstance has been at the right place at the right time, saying the right things. My whole life is based on happy accidents. Happy accidents. Yeah. Just got married. Yes. Tell me about Mike Silverman. Just got married. Never been married mm -hmm. all these years. Mm -hmm. What happened? How did this woman get Mike Silverman? Well, it's a very, very long story. This no, just short uh, for me. Uh, what uh, happened? Uh, it's just, again, a series of... of uh, were you Happy tired I, of being alone? Let's say it like Well, I, I call Nick the Greek in Vegas, and I say, how, how long do I have to go? And Nick the Greek says, you better make a move. Uh -huh. And so I married this lovely lady who I know for about 30 years. Oh, you've known her? Oh, yeah, yeah. For yeah, 30, yeah. but you got hooked. Yes. Got, I shouldn't use that word, hook. Bad you're word, very bad happy. Word. You're very happy yeah, now. Yeah. Going to uh, Istanbul for the honeymoon. Is that where you're going? Yeah. Got any good phone numbers in Istanbul? Istanbul. <laughs> the yeah. old Istanbul, the yeah. new. The old is great, though, Mike. You'll love it uh, there. I've been there. I'm going to be spending time in both old and both, new. Both young. The best advice for mm. young real estaters mm. who come out to Hollywood, who wants to get into become Mike Silverman, mm. your name is so well known, mm. to become Mike Silverman, mm. what would you advise him? Tell me. Get connected pretty quickly. and. Uh, do the right thing and care for people and watch over them while you're making your deal and say what you know and know what you say. Uh -huh. And it's a build up and again, it's a bunch of luck and a bunch of happy accidents. You keep saying that word luck. Which it is camera luck, am I looking it? at? Doesn't matter. This one right here is fine. Hello Look at me camera. and you're fine. Look at me. <laughs> Mike Silverman. Uh, it's, it's luck. A lot of luck. Timing and luck. Am I right? Taking advantage of circumstances and sensing when uh, something is happening requires an additional move. Right. And, uh, worked very well. Right. Enjoy doing real estate? Mike? Oh, yes. Never wanted to be an actor? Well, uh, I had a bad childhood, uh, and uh, I ended up a very, in fact, can I tell about Mike Wallace and say 60 you Minutes? You certainly yeah. can. You were on 60 Minutes with Mike Wallace. What happened is I made up a shtick with my uh, PR fellow at the time where I'm showing houses with my helicopter. Right. Now, I don't own any helicopter, but when you rent it The one in Malibu you were showing the people? Right. When yeah. I rent a, a helicopter for $450 an hour, it's my helicopter yes. in that hour. Right. Anyway, Esquire wrote a, up about this, and um, um, 60 Minutes show, Mike Wallace is always looking around for ideas, and he's glancing through that. Right. And he called me and says, Mr. Silman, I noticed this thing about the helicopter. I think I'd like to interview you for a possible um, spot on the 60 Minutes show. Mm -hmm. I says, Mike, I can't do it. He says, I beg your pardon? And he says, why can't you? Well... Mike, I had a very bad childhood. I ended up with a very, being a neurotic kid with a bad speech defect. I stuttered. Mm -hmm. I don't want to stutter locally, but I don't want to stutter coast to coast, I told him. I don't think you stutter at all, well, so I, go ahead. I stutter, I, now I stutter by appointment only. Okay. <laughs> but uh, Mike Wallace said, come on. He flew out and he did 20 minutes on me. And they took him up in my, in my chopper and uh, we had a wonderful repartee up there. What has been the hardest for Mike Silverman as a real estater? Uh, I don't remember any really, I remember a couple of rough spots, uh, but uh, mostly it's been all good. I love right. what I do. You do love what oh, you do? Yeah. You have to love what you do to well, be successful. Well, it's mixing and uh, I'm getting over my, my, my shyness now, you see, uh -huh. and I'm getting to mix nice. What makes people. Mike Silverman drives going to clubs, theaters, um, going to restaurants? You're out every night practically, you know, uh, Mike. I've seen you everywhere. I used to go out with Grace Robbins, and I used to see you. Yes. The debonair man of town, you know, wow. and all these women chase Mike Silverman. Okay. What, what is your secret, Mike? Bef now you're married, so that's different. But what is Mike Silverman's secret? I don't know for sure. It could be my after-shave lotion. I don't know for <laughs> Come sure. Come on. <laughs>
Tell me about Shasha uh, Gabor. Shasha, a wonderful, wonderful lady. She's a great housekeeper. Every time she gets divorced, uh, she keeps the house. It's a, just a wonderful situation there. And she's been very good to me over the years. I've sold houses for her. You have sold them, uh, huh? About uh, Glenn Ford. Oh, that, tell me about him. Fine gentleman. I've been in his house a number of times. Uh -huh. It's right was, behind the Beverly Hills Hotel. Yeah, he had one major tragedy. A very good friend, uh, William Holden, right. uh, passed away. And you knew him very well, Mike. Oh, yes. He was, wasn't he good? What, the way he died, the way he oh, went. Oh, yeah. It was so sad. Can, can I show a picture to you? Uh, Go ahead. This is, uh, I spend a lot of time in Africa. I love animals. And uh, mm -hmm. picture myself with gray hair. Gray hair? Well, white hair, excuse <laughs> white me. Hair. <laughs> white hair. White hair. With a little bit of a. I wish I had uh, my. Uh, you. Oh. Okay. Ah, oh, look at myself. Nice, so you have just. Can we just. Yeah, take, 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 around. Is this way? That's yeah. a three there months old are. mountain lion. Look at that. And really? what happened is. Mike, your hair is a little touchy brown there, <laughs> huh? It's getting to be a very good looking. Ah, an Look at that. That's ordinary really great, fellow. Mike. This, so you brought this back from Africa? Yeah, well, William Holden took that picture. Uh huh. And he made me an honorary member of the McKinney Safari Club. Right, right. And that's an experience right there and then. So I got to know Holden pretty well. What a delightful fella. And he died so badly. Yes, wasn't it? And uh, getting back to Glen Ford, uh, he was quite uh, uh, hurt by that, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at Mike Silverman right now. Uh, spiritual? Um, I mean spiritual by means meditation, quietness. How does Mike get himself together? Well, I had an old Russian father who taught me uh, to enjoy classical music at a very young age. Right. And I find that very spiritual. I travel all over Europe finding... Uh, Your father was a tailor. Yes, yes. He was a tailor. Yes. That's interesting. I love tailors because they have to be very patient. Mm, Taylor's mm. got to sew in patience. Yeah. Is that where you learned your patience from your dad, you say? Uh, I didn't have much uh, of that from dad. I just learned it on my own salary, my, with my own way of living and developing this patience. Mike, I'm looking back. Would you say uh, you would do it differently, or would you you've enjoyed it? I mean, would you do it a little, just a little differently in your life? Right I now? don't know. I enjoyed every bit of it. And I loved it. And I wouldn't do anything else uh, career-wise. I could retire, I should retire, but I don't want to. I hate that R word, retire. Uh huh. What's the joy for you of, uh, as a real estater? What? Just making people happy. That's the secret, huh? Absolutely. I well, uh, when Frank Sinatra married Mia Farrow, can I go on that? Yes, I'd like to know about that. Uh, you and Frank were very close. We just lost Frank Sinatra, <laughs> your dear friend. Yes. Tell me. Well, uh, Frank calls one day and he says, I'm marrying a very pretty girl named Mia Farrow. And she wants me to buy a house in Bel Air and get rid of the bachelor pad off of Coldwater on Beaumont Drive. Right. And so I uh, drove them around Bel Air, and they pointed out a house that uh, didn't have a for sale sign, so I dropped them back at uh, right. his house. I went back, knocked on the door, and a wonderful little lady uh, uh, answered the, and said, uh, what can I do for you? I said, I'm just getting to know people around the area. Uh -huh. and I just want to meet everybody. She said, my house is not for sale. And so... She said, in that case, come in and have a cup of tea. The tea turns to scotch, and I sold the house to Frank and Mia Farrow. But afterwards, I'm having lunch with John Kluge at the old La Scala on Santa Scala's, Monica Boulevard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Frank said, I understand you have, uh, we know who John Kluge is. Yes, I, of course. Go uh, ahead. Explain uh, it to my audience. Maybe they don't know. Go uh, ahead. Kluge's a multi-billionaire. owns Metro Media, Foster and Clyde. Right. Buys and sells radio stations and mm -hmm. television stations, and a, a sensational gentleman. And over lunch, and saying you have Frank's uh, house for sale, I could be interested. I said, well, I'd like to show it to you tomorrow morning. He said, I can't see it tomorrow morning. I'm going off to buy Mount Wilson. <laughs> uh -huh. I'll give you an offer right now. He writes out a $20,000 check. Frank was in town. Boom. Uh -huh. We made the deal. And uh, s next day, John Kluge calls me from Mount Wilson. I said, John, I don't know how to tell you this, but you just bought a house you never saw. Mm -hmm. So what happens when he did see it, he liked it, and then he moved in, and everything was happy. Sixteen months later, I get a call from uh, Frank Sinatra saying, me and I are getting divorced, so I'd like for you to sell the house. He and was very much in love with her, wasn't oh he? Oh, yeah. She was such a delightful person. Uh -huh. And uh, today they're having the eulogy, I think, I know, here they are. And she's going Today to and there. tomorrow. She's going to be there today? Uh, yeah. Is she coming in? Today and tomorrow. Today and there. tomorrow, yes. Yeah. And so uh, what happened is, and then he said to me, and I'd like to get my old house back again. I said, well, 
just take a phone call. I called you on Kluge. He says, Mike, your timing is incredible. I'm getting a divorce. Mm -hmm. And um, I sold the house back to Frank. Ah, I'm making deals right and left, and it's been wonderful. What would you like people to remember about Frank Sinatra, Mike? You have known him oh, so well. Yeah. What do you think? You know, he's such a great singer, such a technical Fraser. So, uh, you know, he was he was a master yeah, of his craft. Like you're a master, you know, you're a showman of the real estate. Mm. I mean, you know, you have to have that showmanship, that finesse, that class to show people homes and with personality. Mm -hmm. That's what Mike Silverman has, yes, I yes, think. Yes, yes. yes. I try, Sinatra, I try. it walked down that stage, and he was very happy when he was on that stage. Tell me about it. There was magic. You have to remember uh, where he um, from where. From once he had come, where he said the gutters of Hoboken. Right. He started about the lowest echelon of anybody can be, and uh, because you did too. You came from gutters of the Bronx. Not look well, well, the not the gutters, a little but above you the came uh, off the gutter. And on the look side what happened to you. You yeah. both. Okay, go ahead. And so uh, uh, he, of course, became uh, uh, an icon and an incredible, incredible human being. Gave joy to so many people. Right. And your tape recording when I called you, you had a little snippet. I of have a. a Tribute. Dull life. I met Frank in Jilly's in New York mm. years ago with Dick Roman, my friend who gave me my name, Skippy Lowe. Mm. And Dick used to get up at Jilly's restaurant and sing. And he they had a piano player there, and he was just great. Dick used to sing Love is a Many Spended Things, all these great. And Frank used to yeah. sit there and look at Richard, and, and um, they became good friends. He's an Italian boy from Brooklyn, mm -hmm. Dick Roman was. And uh, I used to go there, and I, I, I met Frank several times there, and he was such a great gentleman, you know, really a great guy. I just, um, and I he wasn't, a, he, I think he was down just a little at mm. that time. He wasn't, you oh know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Well, I, uh, uh, when you live in the Bronx, the trick is to get out of the Bronx July and August, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, the stork that brought me into life, the stork, right. was heading for a Connecticut farmhouse. <laughs> and it got caught in a, in a cross and ended up in a tenement in the Bronx. <laughs> if I ever catch that store, boom, <laughs> there goes the beak. Uh, but uh, but the, the thing is, um, um, my father did pretty well as uh -huh. a tailor. He uh -huh. worked in the sweatshops. Right, right. And in sweatshops. Uh, and oh. and he, he, he did enough to send his family up to uh, uh -huh. uh, little places uh, up into the country. Right. And then one day he said, I'm not, uh, I mean, we've had a bad year, we have to stuck in the Bronx. <laughs> for July and August, and I began to think. I, I bought a set of traps for $28 mm -hmm. and practiced W-O-R in uh -huh. front of uh -huh. And I went downtown and got a job with four other guys. And I worked up in the mountains, as we say, Catskill up Mountains. Up the Catskills, I did too. I used to perform up there. I, I was 16 years old, my salary was six bucks a week and all I could eat, and I was a skinny <laughs> But kid. wasn't it joyful? Yeah. Wasn't it joyful? Mike Silverman, uh, get back to Frank Sinatra for a moment. Um, favorite song, mm. you have so many of them. What's your favorite? I'm going to tell you. What's your favorite? Well, obviously the best is uh, doing it my way. You know. My way? Yeah. Uh, I loved it. I think it's great. But Got You Under My Skin, that is the song of Sinatra. When he comes on that stage magic. and sings I Got You Under My Skin, that's it. Pure magic. It is pure magic. Oh. He, You've seen him in Vegas many mm -hmm. times. What does Mike Silverman now thinks? Uh, you've been watching him on television. Mm -hmm. You've been watching all these wonderful people like uh, Don Rickles. Yeah. All the greats mm. talking about him. Mm. What would you like to say about him, Mike? Well, he always surrounded himself with sensational musicians. I studied just now. Did you, see that? Did you catch that? Yes. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and on my name, the M word, I have trouble. My, 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 my That's Mike. okay, Mike. <laughs> uh, somehow I got through it. Um, <laughs> And um, uh, I met some of the people uh, that um, uh, wrote all his music. Right. And his phrasing was so exquisite. That's, that was it. And it was a magic. Poetry. That was his magic. His magic was his phrasing. Yes, uh, he was. He was a genius. Mm. Tell me about Sydney, Australia. They interviewed you. They. Uh, mm. They. Well, they. Tell me about Mike Silverman in Australia. They, they came over here, or did you go over there? Uh, Channel 9 made some inquiries about who would be the best broker to talk to about uh, major houses right. in the area. And enough people mentioned my name, and they called me. They sent a, a well-known Australian actor to interview me. Right. And uh, we drove around town and showed him places, and it was on Channel 9 in Sydney, if you happen to be in Sydney at that day. Right. It worked out very well. We got a top rating. Mike Silverman, to be a real estater, to be an actor, ego. Ego is first. Mm. Tell me about it. 
is that important, having an ego up there? I mean, they say Mike Silverman has a very strong ego. Uh, I think I think the danger of ego it sometimes turns into ar arrogance. You arrogance, know? yeah. And we have some clients. But if you know how to carry it, oh, yes, that's yes, the most yeah. important thing. You don't fight them, uh, but you have to have a little humor, you know. Right. When people come into the Beverly Hills area, I try to get some laughs out of them because buying a house is a very emotional thing. Uh huh. And I tell them that the uh, Beverly Hills Police Department has unlisted number. Uh huh. And the fire you department uses water. You always throw the water. humor in there. You gotta have humor. The sense of humor. What's real estate now doing of Beverly Hills? How is it selling? What's happening with it? We've had several quiet years until recently. Right. At this moment, the market is hot. Oh, the prices of homes, Michael. It's What's amazing. the most expensive home did Mike Silverman ever sell? Well, Sultan of Brunei uh, he bought the Beverly Hills Hotel. I sold him a house behind the hotel for $12.5 million. Uh huh. It wasn't worth 12 million, but whatever the Sultan wants, the Sultan gets. Right. And uh, that was one of my more interesting deals. Finer's fees. People do get finer's fees from real estaters. Yes, yes. Because I've had many people stop me and say, oh, if you can s help me sell this house, Skip, I'll give you a finer's fee. What mm. is a finer's fee? I mean, I know what a finer's fee. What what does a person get on a finer's well, fee? Well, uh, you've got to be very careful on finer's fees because in certain areas they frown on it. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of brokers do it, and it appears that uh, from their own commission, once they sell it with the company they're with, uh -huh. uh, they can uh, gift uh, a per an unlicensed person right. a certain amount of money to make it interesting for them to... Uh, uh -huh. uh, it's a good way to generate business. Good uh -huh. way. Tell me, Mike, fine, you're going, Mike Silverman, to um, Istanbul? Istanbul. Ah, on your honeymoon. What yeah. made... <laughs> What decide Istanbul of all places? I'm I mean, trying to get as I mean, far why not Morocco <laughs> or somewhere? Go I'm ahead. I'm trying to get as far away from the Bronx as possible. <laughs> yeah, but Istanbul, I mean, oh. that's kind of an interesting place yeah. to go. Why uh, Turkey? Well, I'm taking a cruise okay. starting in Istanbul, uh -huh. going into Spain. And then oh, so you're taking oh, a, oh, yeah, a cruise. Yeah. I see. But I'm getting there about four days early because I want to explore the town and really enjoy it. Uh -huh. Have you ever been to uh, Istanbul? Yes, I have. It's a great place. Oh, yeah. I was there in the sep mm. uh, no, the late 60s, as a matter of fact. Yeah. It was great. Just loved it there. I, I love traveling. I worked at Hilton. Oh, I did too. Mm. I used to travel all the time, and I wish I really miss it. I really do. Where would you, Mike? Uh, now you're married. Mm. You're going to take your honeymoon. Mm -hmm. uh, your wife. Mm -hmm. What does she do? Where? What uh, does she's she be a little actress. She was an actress, really. At Norfolk, Virginia, and she um, went to New York about 19. Did about 100 TV shows. Up for some. Oh, oh, Awards. Did you she catch was that a TV Did actress. You see that just now? Yes. Award. No, no. Award. Fine. You're fine. She was a TV actress. Right. And she did a lot of shows. And all of a sudden, she uh, began to sense uh, uh, that she was too young for certain parts and too old for other parts. Uh huh. So she went to work for Eastman Kodak. Uh -huh. Began climbing up the corporate ladder. Uh huh. And then uh, she decided she had never been to college, so she just quit and got a, an endowment or a grant and went to work for UCLA. Uh huh and went for her masters in, uh, in archaeology uh -huh. and forensic things. Mm -hmm. And uh, then she came back into, into my life about that time. And What's the fortune cookie about? Tell me about oh. the <laughs> I, I heard about the fortune cookie, Mike. <laughs> Something well, happened there. What happened? I always like to innovate, do unusual things. Uh, uh, Ma Madame, Madame Wu had a restaurant for many years. Madame Wu, yes. And uh, she decided to close up, so I was invited to the closing party. And you were at the closing party, right? Right. And we had the usual fortune cookies. And when Davy opened the fortune, he said, "Will you marry me?" And uh, during the meal, I would get up and did surgery on a fortune cookie in a private room. Uh huh. Being a graphic artist at one time, I was very clever with my hands. I brought a scalpel and I brought tweezers, uh -huh. and I I and I did an operation on the fortune right, cookie. Right, right, right. Put the old thing up, put the new one in. And everybody thought that was spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope your trip is very successful. Thank you. Thank you. Istanbul. Yeah. Loved it. Mm. I had a great time there. I got robbed there at Istanbul when I was at the Hilton. Oh. Be careful. Oh, Mike. Yes. I'm telling you, yes. they watch you, the Americans. Mm. But it's great. And enjoy your trip and happy Thank marriage, you. Mike. Oh, God. Thank you very much. And you're coming back to real estate again. Oh, right? yes, yes. Going back to work. Yes, well, you yes. keep yourself busy, Mike. I enjoy. Is that the most important thing, the word you're saying, enjoy and